have Maddie asking her why she wants to leave and essentially begging her to stay with her, pleading. And yet she leaves anyway. Admittedly, with people she knew Maddie didn't know. I don't believe Jordy had any intention of spending the night there in the first place. She knew she was going to leave that night. She just wasn't honest with Maddie. I don't think Jordy was a friend to Maddie that night at all. And her actions the following day with grabbing her shit and leaving, lying about contacting Dawn, concerned about Maddie, bragging that she aced all her polygraphs, trying to deter to other people like Bjornsson and in interviews and just this overall aloofness about this whole situation is just rubs you wrong. I know police ruled her out as a suspect, and I don't think she had a hand personally in the disappearance, nor do I think she had a behind-the-scenes role either, but I think she knows more, I think she saw more, and I think she feels more from that night, and has chosen to remain quiet about it to this day. She has a key in solving this. Whether she is aware of it or not, though, I don't know. Next is Garrett. My theory is strictly based on the lack of information available to the public in regards to him and the investigation done to him. Should there be substantial proof otherwise, that would negate this opinion. But regardless, it's an opinion and it's mine as of right now. Garrett is a prime suspect in my book solely based on circumstantial evidence. He was one of only a few, if any, people left at the campsite according to Jordy's timeline and the known timeline of when Manny was, Maddie was last seen or heard from. He was apparently upset enough to abort any plans he had that night of staying and camping. He departed from the area not long before Maddie is presumed to have gone missing. Given no signs of struggle at the scene, it is suggested that Maddie left both potentially in a vehicle and with someone she at least trusted enough to go with. Garrett would fit that profile, and he is at the scene. He arrives the next day to clean up, which provides ample opportunity to further destroy any other evidence that could have possibly incriminated him. The jewelry, too. It would make sense why Jordy didn't see them there Saturday, but found them Sunday. He came back Saturday after she had left. He could have planted them there. Also, though some articles stated that Jordy said she found them on Saturday, too, I don't know if that's inconsistent reporting or... Jordy changing her story, but most sources said that she found them Sunday, and that would feed this theory. Police apparently searched phone records and checked out all phones that pinged off the cell towers in the area at the time of her disappearance. Garrett's wouldn't have stood out to them because he was known to be there. Anyone at that party could be explained away. It's the perfect guise. Regardless, if it isn't Garrett, in my opinion, it has to be a party goer. I'm sorry, but the polygraph rule out method is horseshit, in my opinion, and they need to scratch that and start all over again. Lastly, the unnamed caller. Again, he's been cleared of involvement by police, probably by polygraph. But if that's based on the polygraph, again, a horseshit in my book. Dawn stated that she 100% believes that Maddie ultimately wouldn't have chosen to stay behind if she was going to be alone. She had to be expecting someone or someone already had to have been there with her. That someone could possibly be the last person to call her. Maybe he showed up after everyone left, hence no one seeing him. He offered her a ride and being that people were gone, Maddie finally felt okay leaving her stuff behind and left with him. It is possible. And it's another angle that should be investigated more thoroughly, in my opinion. Essentially, to sum things up, I believe we have the pieces to solve the disappearance. I just don't think they have been examined thoroughly enough. Madison Scott went missing from Vanderhoof area in BC, Canada in the early hours of May 28, 2011. She is 5'4", weighing approximately 160 pounds at the time of her disappearance, with a gingery brown colored shoulder length hair. She has a bird silhouette tattoo on the inside of her left wrist and a piercing on her left nostril. There is a $100,000 reward for any information provided that leads to solving this case. If you have any information regarding the whereabouts of Madison Scott, head over to findmaddie.ca. You can remain anonymous. As always, guys, thank you for tuning in. Sorry for the delay in this episode. There will be more to come, I promise. Head over to the socials and like or follow or more. Check out the Patreon page if you would like special shit and a way to support the podcast. 
feel free to email me with any questions or concerns, recommendations, or just to swap theories on this case or any of the other cases that I cover. And until next time, don't go camping with ship friends, stay safe, and bring Maddie home. Bye-bye.